out front now, one of the people who's just been banned and sanctioned by the Russian government, the retired Army Major General Spider Marks. Also with me, retired Air Force Lieutenant General Charlie Moore, Tuna Moore. Uh, General Marks, let me just ask you this. Uh, I know you, you sort of uh, just found this out moments ago here that you're on this list. Why do you think the Russians have banned you now? Aaron, I really have no clue, but frankly, I think I'm a, I'm a tad honored that they would put me in that category. I think exclusively, I, I have a platform with CNN. Looks like there was just a freeze of his video there. Uh, General Moore, while we're, while we're trying to fix this, let me ask you here. I'll, I'll get him back to talk about that. But we did just play a moment, the breaking news, a moment ago of Biden tonight saying uh, yeah, that, yes, of course, the aid to Ukraine is open-ended. There would be no limit to it. And it comes on the same day that we learned the U.K. is actively considering sending those British fighter jets to Ukraine. Now, Russian response warned that doing that would mean military ramifications for the whole world. What is your biggest concern about this? You know, when you hear, you know, possible British fighter jets and now open-ended aid from the U.S. could mean really anything. Well, there's a couple things to consider when you take a look at these advanced weapon systems that President Zelensky is asking for, whether it's the fourth generation fighters like the Typhoons or the F-16s or the armor that he's asking for from UK uh, and from Germany. The first is that it is gonna take time to train their operators to use these pieces of advanced equipment. In the case of the fighters, I can tell you, even if we send them uh, very experienced, uh, capable uh, pilots that have had a couple years of experience or even combat experience since the Ukraine war started, started yeah. to come and train on those aircraft, it's gonna still take a while for them to get up to, to snuff in terms of being able to employ that uh, aircraft uh, effectively. And General Marks, I wanted to ask you about the time being of the essence, but before I do that, a, a chance for you to finish your thought about being on this list. Well, I think the only reason I'm on the list is because I, I, I have an opportunity to have conversations with folks like you, Aaron. Um, I, I think that's that's it. And, I, and I'm as honest as I can be in terms of my assessments. So now, okay, so to the point uh, that the General Moore was just making, which is about um, the, 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 the time it's going to take to get this, some of these new weapon systems, if they're going to continue coming, ready to go, right? You've got Fred Plykins reporting, Putin pushing this offensive now, right? And then you couple that with the reporting that we're now seeing that the Russian government is threatening more charges, longer penal colony sentences to prisoners who refuse to go to the front. And they're doing it most urgently. The highest numbers we understand are in the regions bordering Ukraine, right? So the whole point is get them, get them, get them fast, get them on the front line, right? No pretense here of even of training. So if time is of such the essence here for Putin, what do you read into that? You know, it tells me that clearly if I'm a prisoner in Russia, I'd prefer cold borscht than I would a bullet in the head when I engage with the Ukrainians. Russia is in, Russia is in a bad spot right now, and they know it, and time is not on their side, other than the strategic length of this engagement. I mean, I don't think Russia's going anywhere, but they're getting routinely smashed when they engage with the Ukrainians. So he's throwing, frankly, he's throwing good money after bad. These soldiers are not going to be trained, as you indicated. They're going to be rushed into the fight, and I think the Ukrainians are going to have a tremendous opportunity to kill as many Russians as they can. What, the, what is lacking, however, is described by General Moore, which is the ability to conduct operational warfare, this three-dimensional fight with aircraft synchronized on the ground, not separate engagements, right. fighting aircraft in concert with the ground, that's what the Ukrainians need to have, and that's a longer time frame. Right. And General Moore, the prisoners that we understand that are being rushed to the front lines are reportedly going to join Wagner Group forces, the Putin-endorsed mercenary group. But to be clear, the understanding is that it's right, you know, it's the government's involved here. The government is the one saying longer sentence or we're going to put these other charges out, right? This is the Russian government full force behind getting more uh, mercenaries on the ground for the Wagner Group. What does that say to you? Well, this has been uh, Putin's turn to uh, around the globe and in many difficult situations from Syria to countries throughout Africa. When Putin wants an organization to do his dirty work and to have some level of deniability, he's reached out to Prigozhin and his Wagner troops who've committed countless uh, war crimes and atrocities around the globe. And when things did not start going well in Ukraine, he reached out again to Prigozhin and Wagner and brought those troops in. And they started showing a lot of success compared to the Russian regulars. And so that has elevated Prigozhin's view with Putin. It's also elevated his power and prestige back in Moscow.